it was a historic fourth and fifth round for the UIM F1H Duo World Championship as Xiamen, China hosted the first ever back-to-back -back Grand Prix in the series. Two days, two races under the sponsorship of Senstar as the world's premier powerboat racers fought it out for the Grand Prix of Xiamen followed by the Grand Prix of China. Situated on the southeast coast of China, Xiamen is a major and historic port city with a name that fittingly means Gateway to China. This is a city of ancient wonders with a rich heritage and a proud culture, evident in the many temples and places of worship that still attract pilgrims and visitors today, making it a popular tourism destination with its amazing coast, verdant scenery, natural splendors, parks, mountains, and seaside attractions. Of special significance is Gulang Yu Island, one of the first international settlements in China, a UNESCO World Heritage Site where no cars or bikes are allowed. Xiamen is also a modern, industrial, commercial and financial hub. The skyscrapers of the city center standing as a monument to the bustling dynamism of the city. With the shopping on Zhongfan Road and the cafes, restaurants and entertainment that the city offers showcasing the young and vibrant lifestyle of Xiamen. Xiamen is deeply entwined with the sea, popular for its beaches and sailing, which makes it a natural choice for the UIM F1H2O World Championship, which raced back-to-back -back Grand Prix for the first time on the South China Sea. The locals gathered in their thousands to the UIM F1H2O race area to see the boats and meet the drivers, with those brave enough taking the ride in the F1H2O two-seater. Now let's see what happened the day before in the Grand Prix of Xiamen. In the Senstar Grand Prix of Xiamen, Alex Corella stunned the field in qualifying to take his first pole position in 18 months. Despite a jump start by Peter Marin, Corella soon took control of the race in his bid for a 16th career Grand Prix title for his new team Maverick F1. Behind Corella, Schiap slipped back to P2 as Jonas Anderson moved up to chase Corella with Stromoy just behind Anderson, never letting the Team Sweden driver out of her sight, putting the pressure on for 32 laps. Sean Torrente, the defending world champion and world standings leader going into Xiamen, started back in ninth, making his way up to fifth before he was overhauled by his Team Abu Dhabi teammate Dani Alkamzi. But when Shiap and then Al Kamzi broke down in quick succession, Torrente moved up to fourth. Out ahead, having taken the lead in the opening lap, Alex Corella never looked back, closing out a start-to-finish race win to put two seasons of frustration behind him. Anderson held Stromoy off for runner-up. Torrente came in fourth. That result was enough to put Jonas Anderson on top of the world standings at the end of Xiamen, three points clear of Torrente, with Stromoy moving up into third, followed by Alkamzi fourth and Corella fifth. But everything could change the next day in round five. The Senstar Grand Prix of China was raced the day after the Senstar Grand Prix of Xiamen, a grueling two-day marathon with two qualifyings and two races that would test the limits of teams, mechanics, drivers and their boats and engines. Crews worked around the clock to get their equipment and setups ready for the historic back-to-back -back racing. There were 18 drivers from nine teams competing at the Senstar Grand Prix of China as Grand Prix of Xiamen runner-up Jonas Anderson of Team Sweden led the world standings going into round five. This is Anderson's first time leading a world championship with just two rounds to go. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really tough because we have been working to rebuild the engines for two boats this uh, yesterday evening and almost in the night. So it's, it's tough with a small team, but uh, everything so far feels very good. So. Hopefully it's stay in one piece. His teammate Eric Eden also had a good outing the day before, going from last to finish eighth on the day. The team standings leaders, Team Abu Dhabi, have both drivers in the running for the world title in 2019. Defending world champion Sean Torrente is second in the world standings behind Anderson, and there are still two races to go, but he needs to figure out what went wrong the day before if he's to bounce back. <laughs> Oh, 
right back to the top. Yeah, so I'm three points behind now, and I was three points up coming in. Our goal is always to have our fate in our hands in Sharjah. So we have, have, have to have another good race today. Yesterday, once I got into a decent point scoring position, I literally just wanted to maintain and finish the race and get my points and move on to today and know I have another chance to, to improve. We're here to win championships, not boat races. I mean, that's my only goal when I wake up in the morning every day is to be world champion. So uh, I want to keep this number one on the boat. Torrente's teammate, veteran Tani Alkamzi, is lying fourth in the world standings and is always a threat. Third in the world standings after round four was Moritz Stromoy of Emirates Racing. The Norwegian is closer than ever at a shot for a year-end podium, but can she and her team keep pace with the intensity of the racing here? It's hard for uh, for everyone. The mechanics have been working all night, but normally now by this time we are resting, but uh, <laughs> now we have to get ready and uh, we will for sure. The man of the hour is Alex Carella, who ended two seasons of bad luck to clinch the Senstar Grand Prix of Xiamen the day before with his new team Maverick F1 and his trusty old DAC boat. He's in the running for a year-end podium. Can he make it back-to-back -back wins in Xiamen? The home team is CTIC F1 Shenzhen China, with locals getting behind them. Can Philip Xiaop finally complete a race in 2019? And will Peter Marin continue his consistent form and possibly even push for a podium in race two in Xiamen? The Senstar Grand Prix of China will be run on exactly the same circuit as the day before. A seven-pin course with a long sweeping stretch from turns six to one that has proved especially tricky with waves and winds, having ended Xiop's qualifying campaign the day before, a spectacular crash that sent him high in the air, somersaulting end over end. The circuit requires exceptional concentration and preparation for drivers and teams. In the Rebellion official qualifying, drivers have three sessions in their quest for pole position. The field is reduced to 12 drivers at the end of Q1, then six at the end of Q2. In Q3, they have the course to themselves and two laps in which to set their fastest times for Rebellion pole position. 17 drivers started qualifying with F1 Atlantic's Duarte Benavente unable to start. Moritz Stromoy was in the zone and racing to perfection, laying the fastest time in Q1, but her Emirates racing teammate Bartek Marsalek ended the session in 15th. Alex Carella was also exceptionally fast, second only to Stromoy. Carella's teammate Cedric de Guin was off the pace, however, unable to make it into Q2. Sharjah team's Philip Roms was hovering around the cutoff zone in 13th all session, but with less than one minute to go, he found the pace he needed to just get in at 12th at the expense of Blaze Performance's American driver Greg Foster. In Q2, Stromoy was again supreme, sending a clear message to the field that she is a contender. Meanwhile, defending world champion Sean Torrente was doing much better than the previous day, easily making the Q3 cut this time, but no such luck for Tanyal Kamzi, who was unable to improve on 7th in Q2. Nothing uh, too much, both in the course, we can good, uh, find good uh, lap, and I try my best, but uh, number 7, no problem, we have race, long race, we try our best. Jonas Anderson also made it into Q3, while his teammate Eric Eden put on a good performance to finish 8th, just ahead of Alberto Comparato of F1 Atlantic in 9th. Yet another rough qualifying for victory team's Eric Stark, as he spends most of the session on the pontoon, his team struggling to get him back on the water to no avail. I think this is the worst weekend I had since I joined the Formula 1 family. And I don't know, it's just everything breaks and you know, it's just bad luck all the time and you know, I, I don't know, I don't know what to say. Tough luck again for Sharjah team as neither Sami Celio nor Philip Roms make it into the final six, out in 10th and 11th respectively. The Q3 shootout, just six drivers left. First out was Philip Schiap, the three-time world champion from CTIC, not finding the pace out there in either lap. Perhaps a little shaken by his Q3 crash the day before, he sets a lackluster lap time. Next man out, Jonas Anderson. He continues his fine pace from the previous day, handily beating Schiap by 0.76 seconds. <laughs> 
to take provisional pole. Alex Carella followed Anderson out on the circuit, eager for a repeat of his pole win the day before, and he nailed it. 51.51 seconds, bumps Anderson down to second, but will it be good enough for pole? After a horrendous qualifying the day before, Torrente was a new man out there. Incredible pace, aggressive driving from the American. He wants it, and he gets it. One lap is all it took, Torrente on pole, but he's not satisfied. He lays an even faster lap time on lap two, 50.87. I'm just excited because the guys, they keep their head up and they keep working. And even if they beat us, we had a really good lap. I mean, if they beat us, they beat us, but we had our best stuff today. Peter Marin of CTIC has his work cut out for him, but he looked up to the task, tight on those turns, fast down those straights, a devil be damned run. Did he get it? 51.23, he beats everyone except Torrente. One driver left, Moritz Stromoy. She was fastest in both Q1 and Q2 and went out for pole, but disappointing run from her, finishes fifth ahead of Schiap. What a victory for Sean Torrente. He leads the Rebellion Pole Position Championship and he is in prime place to start the Sen Star Grand Prix of China with this crucial Rebellion official qualifying win. Peter Marin is second with Corella starting in third and Jonas Anderson within striking distance in fourth. But it's just a credit to the guys, man. We went to work last night, looked at what we made. We looked ourselves in the mirror and knew we got our butt kicked basically yesterday. And we went back to the drawing board, looked at the data. I took some a hard look at how I was running the race course and said I had to be better. So we got better today. We got half the job done. Now we got to go finish the race. The UIM F1 H2O family were treated to a sumptuous gala dinner as drivers, crews, locals, and organizers mingled and had fun putting the day's stress and excitement behind them. Race day, the Senstar Grand Prix of China, round five of the 2019 UIM F1 H2O season. Rough waters and strong winds on the day. This is the last chance for CTIC's Peter Marin and Philip Schiap to get a podium here for the local fans. This is also the last race before the final round in Sharjah. Team Abu Dhabi's Daniel Kamzi and Sean Torrente need big points to reclaim their top spots in the standings. Moritz Stromoy could put a wrench in the Abu Dhabi plans, but the man on top after the previous day is Jonas Anderson. In front of Anderson is Corella. Can he keep up the good form after yesterday's win? The parade lap drivers and UIM officials greet the crowds who have gathered by the thousands along the shore to watch as Torrente starts in pole position. Torrente's biggest world title rivals, Anderson and Stromoy, P4 and P5. She up sixth, Alcamzi P7, then Eden, Comparato, and Celio completing the first 10 on the start pontoon. Victory driver Eric Stark has his work cut out for him way back in 15. The final moments before the penultimate race of the year. Will the champion be decided here? The teams are ready, the lights go out, the race is on. The opening drag race to the commitment buoy, Torrente on the inside most lane. Sammy Celio has a rough start in 10th as he watches Comparato to his left and his teammate Philip Roms to his right pull away. Cedric Deguin of Maverick F1 also left in the spray as Stark's blue victory boat speeds ahead to Deguin's starboard. The top three are neck and neck going absolutely all out, but Torrente to the left and Corella to the right of Marin start pulling away as the CTIC driver tries to keep up. Torrente shoots out and is first to the commitment buoy. To the outside, Alex Corella in second, but can Peter Marin use his inside lane advantage to hold on to P2? Eric Eden, who started in eighth, has teammate Jonas Anderson in his sights, with Alcamzi on the outside, fighting to hold on to seventh. Out in the lead is Sean Torrente, already pulling away from a fleet of challengers behind him. Alex Corella in second, then Peter Marin, Moritz Strom. <laughs> Oh, 
Illinois and Shiup. Jonas Anderson has fallen back to sixth, losing two positions. In a fight for seventh, Swedish youngster Eric Eden takes on veteran Daniel Kamzi in a drag race on the straightaway. Eden holding the Emirati ace off for now. On that same straightaway, Bartek Marshalek of Emirates Racing challenges last year's world runner-up Eric Stark. Marshalek finding the speed on the outside, and he does it. The Polish driver moves up to 13th position. As Torrente builds a three-second lead in the Grand Prix of China, Carilla has pipped Marin for second. Anderson slips back to sixth, his world standings lead in jeopardy. Eden up in seventh with Alcamzi behind him, then Comparato of F1 Atlantic in ninth with Roms, Foster and Celio behind him. Eden's seventh position is short-lived, however, as Dani Alcamzi zips past, overhauling the Swede. Eden refuses to back down, giving hot pursuit to Alcamzi on the inside. The Swede looking for some clean water on the outside. He ducks in and the two lock horns in a drag race down the next straightaway. Alcamzi nudges ahead, but Eden pushes him out from the inside, and Eric Eden does it. Eden takes back seventh from Alcamzi. The cat and mouse between Eden and Alcamzi continues, this time with the Emirati on the inside. Eden to his right, staying tight. Alcamzi moves ahead, but Eden is keeping up. In a repeat of last lap, but with roles reversed, this time it's Alcamzi who pushes Eden wide and tucks into the turn to take back seventh as positions change hands once again between these dueling daredevils. There's a yellow flag, Cedric de Guin crashes out and that will eradicate Torrente's lead as the field compresses. Here's the replay from de Guin's onboard camera. The Frenchman catches an edge and it's a hard roll, but at least lands right side up. There is a lot of wave on the turn seven and uh, when I arrive inside the boat goes down and turn completely and the uh, engine is go out of the boat just maintained by the cable. Problems for Sharjah teams Philip Roms and Victory's Eric Stark who are both back on the pontoon. Tough break for Stark, disappointing opening weekend with his new team. Philip Roms may yet go back out. His team worked to get him back in before the green flag restart. The race is back on. Shiap attacking Murat Stromoy as they come around. Corella attacking hard on Torrente. Too hard. He goes over. Corella does a full flip in the air. That is a huge crash. Lap six, and it's yet another yellow flag. Corella's boat in pieces. Corella's okay though as the Osprey rescue team pull up to fish the four-time world champion out. Here it is on the replay. Corella goes for it, trying to get the jump on Torrente, catches air, and the rest is history. With the winds and the waves here, it is a very fine line between smooth speed and disaster. He was hungry for success after so much frustration, but his ambition got the better of him this time. Corella unhurt. His race is over. Meanwhile, Roms back on the pontoon as Sharjah team fix the problem and get their driver back out, but Roms loses two laps in the process. The race under a second yellow flag as drivers await the restart 10 laps into the race. The green flag is up, the race is back on. Following Corella's crash, Peter Morin moves up to second position behind Sean Torrente, but Torrente has managed to keep the lead after two restarts. Behind Morin, Marit Stromoy in third is fending off Shiap in fourth. The back and forth between Eric Eden and Dani Alcamzi continues as Alcamzi challenges Eden for sixth position. Alcamzi cuts in on the inside and he slips past Eden as they switch positions yet again. The battle for third heats up as Shiap pushes on the outside, trying to get around Stromoy, but the Emirates racing driver keeps her nerve, holding off an aggressive drive from Shiap, who finally wants to at least complete a race in 2019. Back in ninth, two-time world champion Sammy Celio is chasing F1 Atlantic driver Alberto Comparato. The Italian got eighth place the day before. He wants to add more points here to his seven overall. Almost halfway through the race, Sean Torrente is maintaining his lead, but Peter Marin is trying to close the gap as they come around the yellow right-hander. Marin, 1.87 seconds behind Torrente. Stromoy in third and on target for more points in a bid for a year-end podium. Shiap giving chase to her in fourth. World standings leader Anderson up a place in fifth. <laughs> Oh. 
but he's almost 12 seconds behind Torrente. Back in the field behind Sammy Celio, the Blaze performance teammates lock horns as Cantando has managed to move up to 10th from 17th ahead of teammate Greg Foster. The epic Al Kamzi Eden battle continues full steam as Eden gives chase, but Al Kamzi makes a mistake on lap 22 and he lands hard. His race comes to a disappointing end as he's towed off, and it's yet another yellow flag. The race it was uh, very rough and uh, bought many traffic. I flipped uh, my boat. Definitely a challenging course as the heated race claims its fourth DNF of the day. Boats line up for the third restart with just 10 laps left. The green flag is up again and the race resumes. Peter Marin tries to get a jump on Torrente, knowing this might be his best and last chance, but Torrente slips from Marin's grasp to hold on to his lead. But Shiap makes no mistake, he uses the restart to get past Stromoy, and this time Anderson is right up there with her, the two lock horns in a battle for fourth place. But Anderson gets past her, Stromoy loses two positions, a big blow. And now it's Peter Marin who has a problem, Marin slows as his teammate Shiap moves up into second position, tough end for Marin. Meanwhile, Sammy Celio gets past Alberto Comparato and sets his sights on Eric Eden. Comparato bumped down to ninth position. Comparato veers off his race line and he nearly collides with Cantando, who narrowly avoids going over. Cantando slows down and pulls off the race course, reducing the field even further with just 10 boats left in the race. Here it is on the replay. Comparato veers off the race line, Cantando barely escaping a crash, but his boat is damaged. Jonas Anderson is not complaining, however, as he finds himself up in third behind Torrente and Schiap, with Stromoy behind him in fourth, then Eden moving up to fifth, followed by Sammy Celio, who moves up to sixth. Stromoy knows she could have been in second at this point, but she at least wants to hang on to fourth. Yet another crash, Alberto Comparato, that is a huge splash. He's angry and his boat is sinking as he tries to get out, his right sponson in pieces. Bad luck for the young driver, that is another yellow flag. Young Comparato, you know, there was no space. We were fighting together and I had no way to go. So he just closed me the way and uh, that's his result. And then he, he flipped out, maybe he's also because he broke his boat against mine, I don't know. With just nine boats left, the laps running out, the race ended under a yellow flag. Torrente is back. Sean Torrente took the Sandstar Grand Prix of China title, his ninth career win. Xiao finally completes a race and gets his first podium since London 2018. Anderson still manages to get 12 points and a podium in third. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have the setup for today. I was totally lost. It was terrible to drive today. And then they start to drop off and I... Uh, then the boat was a little better in the end. Maybe the weather was better, I don't know. Or maybe me. <laughs> So I'm very, very happy with Firth. He's incredible. Stromoy fourth and still on track for a year-end podium. Yeah, I, I tried to hold the uh, shop on my outside and whoops, there was Jonas on the inside. And I I went up in the air and then I think shop came as well. So but it was a very tight race. It was fun. I wish I was on the podium, but we're still third in the championship and it's important. Great result for Team Sweden as Eden also finishes in the top five, Celio with his best result of the year in sixth, and only three other drivers completing the race, Marshall X seventh, Foster eighth, and Delpine ninth. Team Abu Dhabi's luck on the team championship standings continues, 91 points, with Team Sweden in second on 69 points, followed by Emirates Racing in third. It's a very hard race, it, um, uh, and it, it's a lot of rough and difficult to find uh, the good way and stay on the water, but uh, I have experience with my boat and it's easy to, to finish the race. I'm very sad for my uh, teammate because he makes a very good race. Okay, it's, it's, it's a game, but it's strong. sometimes it's very hard. Crazy race, everybody was coming. Coming for me. 
I was just trying to manage the race. You know, I'm just thinking about the championship. I knew Jonas was back there in fourth and fifth. He actually ended up third, but um, it's just about getting in front of that championship. We're so happy to get the win, especially after yesterday, man. We, we just got our butt kicked yesterday. And the team all rallied, and, and we just did a great job, all of us together, the whole team, from front to back, and we come back and got a win, a whole and a win. Torrente is back on top of the world standings, five points clear of Jonas Anderson in second, Stromoy in third on 37 points, then Alkamzi fourth. The championship is still wide open and all will be decided in the final round. As the UIM F1H2O flag is passed on, that completes the historic back-to-back -back Grand Prix in Xiamen. See you in the United Arab Emirates where Sharjah hosts the final round where the 2019 UIM F1H2O World Championship will be decided.